With every layer you put newspaper or some sort of uh, cardboard, basically put something between the layers. Right, so you put a layer of carrots, newspaper or cardboard, another layer of carrots and so on, all the way to the top, put some newspaper across the top, close the container up. Hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com and today I'm gonna to talk about a couple easy ways to store carrots and parsnips over the winter. And these are techniques that work for me here where I live. This is like zone 6A, Nova Scotia, Canada. Coldest temperature we might get in the winter is like minus 20 Celsius. Rarely gets colder than that. Just, just so you can gauge that, okay? Because one of the techniques is leaving them outside and this works for me where I am. <laughs> right? If it gets cold enough, uh, carrots especially will not uh, keep uh, outdoors over the winter. But anyway, have a look here. So I've got carrots. Uh, underneath this dome. A couple nights ago we had freezing temperatures. It got down to like minus uh, seven Celsius. Um, so that was our first really, you know, cold sort of night, right? Uh, it's typical we'll get nights like that in November and December. It just gets colder and colder as winter goes on, usually. Um, so a technique I've used for keeping carrots over the winter with temperatures like that is just putting one of these, you know, transparent uh, plastic domes uh, over the bed uh, but there's a little bit of a trick to it, and, uh, and I did not follow that trick this time, so I'm going to pay the consequences and I'll show you. Um, so the trick is you keep it covered, and uh, so I mean, actually this outer part here is frozen, which is not good because I've got carrots in there. But what happens is that, you know, on the really cold days, the, the ground might freeze a little bit, but then you get some sun and it thaws, right? So over the course of the winter, the top layer that the carrots are in freezes and thaws and freezes and thaws, but it never can continue. You know, if you don't have it covered, it's just gonna to continue to freeze and freeze and freeze, especially in a climate like mine here, where we get a lot of rain. And uh, in the winter, uh, you can have a day where it's minus 20, and a couple of days later, it's above zero and raining, and a couple of days later, it's minus 20 again. So the ground tends to turn to ice. So I have found this trick is sort of the best, the best one. Uh, there's another trick where you can cover everything with uh, leaves or hay. Um, I, I prefer this technique. Uh, I find it's less of a favorable habitat for voles and moles and things like that. Um, also, it's just easier to get at everything because you don't have to remove hay. Um, but then, I mean, that works too, whatever, whatever is good for you, right? Uh, but the trick with this is that the perimeter all the carrots growing in the perimeter have to be harvested because the outer, side, outer part freezes. And today, the outer part is frozen. It's not frozen that deep, but it is frozen. And I got a couple carrots here that are <laughs> frozen in. So I need a pickaxe to get them out because uh, they just won't come out. They're just gonna get more and more frozen in place as the winter goes. You basically need every carrot within, so my, um, Plastic dome covers covers this bed. This is about four, four feet by 10 feet long. I removed all the carrots from the end of the bed, so there's just ones here. But the whole perimeter has to be cleared of carrots six, six inches from the side, because the sides will freeze. And over the course of the winter, every time you come out to harvest, continue to harvest the perimeter from the outside in. Because on the coldest parts of the winter, it's just the center that stays thawed. But let me grab my pickaxe, I'll be right back. Um, so the trick here is to just break the surface. The, this, the outer edge here is frozen down about three inches and it's thawed underneath that. So I'm just trying to work around this carrot to get it out. There we go. Nice carrot, hey? <laughs> right? All right, so I'm just gonna work around the edge here and make sure all the, good God, that's frozen. Make sure all the perimeter carrots yeah, are out. There's another one, for lack of a better term, <laughs> perimeter carrot. Uh, I think they're all, oh, there's one more. Good God, it's frozen solid. All right, I'm gonna work my way around the, this garden here, make sure they're all out. You know, I could, I could wait and see if things get warm and see if this thaws out. But, uh, 
you know, that might not happen. <laughs> it's December. Could happen. I think the forecast is predicting a couple of warm days, but you know, it's December. So, you know, it's, it's going to take me 15 minutes to get this out. The ground's frozen about three inches deep right now. That's not too hard a job to get them out. So yeah, I'm just working my way around to get the outer six inches. Get these guys out. Look at that one. Holy smokes. <laughs> Broke off at the bottom. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> my goodness, what a beast. It's another six incher at the top. Okay, so I've removed all the uh, perimeter uh, carrots now. I'd gotten most of them out previously. There was just a couple, couple stragglers. <laughs> so now I can put this uh, lid back on. Now, just like anything you're trying to insulate, you want it, you know, kind of airtight. So if it's not the case that the thing is sort of forming a good, good solid seal against the ground of your bed, right, just throw some leaves or some hay or even old blankets or cardboard, anything really, right, at either end. There we go. There, yeah, so that's uh that's not perfect, but even that will go a long way. So I mean the ground in here is frozen a little bit, the sort of top crust, and the edge is frozen, but uh, assuming the sun comes out today, right, maybe it'll be two degrees Celsius outside today, just above freezing but it'll be much warmer than that in here. Even in the, the height of winter, uh, it can be 20 degrees Celsius in here, right? Um, so it basically, this dome is insulating the ground to some extent, um, but it really doesn't have a lot of insulation properties. Once the sun goes down and all the heat's gone, this cools down very quickly, right? So what you've got is a bunch of soil with plants in it. And every night the soil's trying to freeze, you know, the top few inches of the soil freezes. And then every day it thaws out again. Every night it freezes, every day it thaws out again. Also, because we're covering this, at least for my climate, it's not getting precipitation on it, right? Most of the ground in my garden, most of my beds are uncovered and it gets snow, and then there's a melt, and then a freeze, almost always in that pattern. Snow, then rain, then freeze. Snow, then rain, then freeze. <laughs> it almost always happens like that during the winter, because we're close to the ocean, and it just has a weird effect on the temperature, the climate here, it's not stable, it never is, all over the place, right? We can get hurricanes in the winter and tropical storms, all kinds of weird things like that. Um, so, if you've got all this moisture in the ground, and then it goes down to like 10 below freezing or more, overnight this the ground just turns to ice like a rock right and it's it's very hard uh, it doesn't it doesn't break like ice it becomes this really hard rock-like type stuff it's basically ice and soil and clay frozen together and uh, you, you drive a pick into it it doesn't break apart the pick just sticks in it if you can get it in at all right so it's a weird kind of soil ice uh, by keeping this dome on top right that keeps all the precipitation off the soil. Sure, it goes in on the sides and stuff like that. Uh, and the sides turn to ice and they stay like that all winter. Um, but the center will sort of stay just, I mean, 
it doesn't dry out in there because it's a closed system. So whatever moisture's in the soil, it just, you know, it uh, evaporates when it's sunny, hits the plastic, there's evaporation, condensation. It's just a little microclimate in there. So the, the, the moisture level in the soil remains constant all winter, uh, but it doesn't freeze or it freezes a bit, it freezes and thaws and freezes and thaws. And for whatever reason, carrots and parsnips seem to be fine like that. Uh, parsnips are even tougher than carrots. They can handle colder temperatures. You leave parsnips in the ground over winter. Um, if you're quick about it, you can dig them up in the spring before they start to grow and still eat them. Uh, in my climates, if, if you leave carrots in the ground over winter uncovered, they just turn to mush. They cannot survive the cold here. The cold uh, breaks down the cell structure of the carrot and wrecks them. Uh, so you have to do something. Either you could leave carrots on the ground, just cover with a bunch of hay or something like this all winter, and they'll stay fine. Um, but if you just leave them uncovered, they will not keep. Um, anyway, so this is one trick for storing them all winter long. It's really nice uh, because whenever you want fresh produce, you can actually come out to your garden and get it. One trick, you have to keep a broom out in your garden, and whenever you get a good snow, you got to come out and brush it off. Not perfectly, you just have to brush off really the top. I usually like to leave snow around the sides because it insulates. But the top, you know, I don't know, two-thirds of the top, right? Brush the snow off of there. Just brush it sideways like that so it gathers around the sides and insulates just so the sun can get in and warm it all up, right? And it makes like a little kind of igloo. So, yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, sure, you can bring your good room in from indoors, but I just have an old nasty one I keep out in the garden all winter long because I have a couple beds I keep like this. Um, the other trick is, and I use this in my garage, is keeping the carrots uh, in a cardboard box. So all I do is I, I take the carrots and I, I lay them out on the garage floor. Now my garage is sort of unique. It stays uh, just above freezing all winter. All winter long it's somewhere between you know two degrees, five degrees, maybe eight degrees Celsius at the most, but rarely it's above five degrees Celsius. So it's sort of refrigerator temperature, right? Right now it's a bit warmer than that. It's probably about eight or nine degrees. Um, but as the winter comes on, it'll stay closer to that five degrees. Sometimes it's just above freezing. Anyway, I pick the carrots. I don't clean them. I just leave whatever, you know, you don't want to leave excessive clumps of dirt, but you basically, you don't want to, um, you know, uh, mess up the, the skin, right? The skin is what's going to maintain the humidity in the carrot. So you take the carrots and you lay them out on a piece of cardboard or cloth on the floor of your garage. Put a fan on them and leave them like that for the day. The next day, just turn them over and put, leave the fan on. So, so basically for about a 48 period of time, uh, 48 hour period of time, you've got the carrots. Um, the skin of the carrot is drying out. I use a fan in my garage because there, there's no air circulation in it. It needs something to move the air around. If, if you've got them in a place where there's good air circulation, you don't need that. But basically you're drying out the skin. Uh, all right, so I do that with carrots, I do that with parsnips, I do that with beets, and I do that with potatoes for that matter. Okay, once that process is complete, you put a layer of them in a cardboard box, okay, take the tops off. Okay, you put a layer of them in a cardboard box, and with every layer you put newspaper or some sort of uh, cardboard, basically put something between the layers, right, so you put a layer of carrots, newspaper or cardboard, another layer of carrots and so on, all the way to the top, put some newspaper across the top, close the container up, or close it up, and just leave it on the floor, assuming your floor is, you know, a cool concrete floor. And what's happening inside that box is the box breathes, but it also, um, it doesn't breathe like perfect, it, basically the box maintains the humidity, right? Your carrots will go soft and rubbery if they start to dehydrate. And there's an, sort of an ideal humidity where they'll stay firm and crunchy. Not, not forever, right? This is a, a basically a, a breaking down, you're a lost process, right? The carrot's, you know, going downhill. <laughs> you're just slowing the speed that it goes downhill. You just take this upstairs, put it on your kitchen counter, and after a week, it's gonna be soft and, and rubbery, right? But you put it in a box with layers, you close the box, you leave it on the ground where it's cooler, right? The air temperature is cooler, so there isn't as much 
uh, you know, drying out and that sort of thing, not as much evaporation. You're just slowing down that process. And for all intents and purposes, because it's dark, because it's cool, because there's layers of paper, um, you're simulating the condition the carrot prefers, being in the ground at a certain temperature. I don't know where the carrot was developed, but it seems to prefer to be in the ground. And it, it doesn't mind a winter because it tastes better in the winter. Uh, but it doesn't like an insane winter, right? So that's the trick. You just put it in a cardboard box with layers, close it up, leave it on the floor of your garage. That's another really easy way to store the carrots. And of course, there's the putting the bales of hay on top of where the carrots are in the garden. That's another trick. Uh, I don't prefer it. <laughs> when I've done it in the past, I find it, I mean, I'm sure there's a trick to it, but I find it difficult to remember where I dug them and where they're not dug because the, the, the hay is always leaving. The same with leaves. Right, just throwing a pile of leaves on the ground, it's, um, it's difficult to move the leaves away and remember where you picked them, where you didn't pick. Not impossible. Right. Another trick, and this all depends on your climate, how cold it gets, is to put like styrofoam or something like that over them. Right? Um, so, I mean, there's lots of different tricks. I've got these anyway. I mean, the reason I, main reason I use these is because I have them. Right? I use these to get things started early in the spring, and I use these to grow... To grow um, Things like tomatoes that you would otherwise transplant, uh, you know, here where I live uh, in May, uh, there's, a, there's a calendar date that says you, you're, there's no more risk of frost. We almost always get frost after that calendar date. It's never reliable. So when you plant something that can't have frost after the frost-free date, I put one of these on it for a couple weeks <laughs> just to be sure because uh, the frost-free date is never the date where we're frost-free ever. <laughs> but it's very rare. I think this year actually it was. So no, I wouldn't have said never ever, but uh, yeah, you, you can't count on it. Let's just put it that way, right? Uh, and there's a lot of things you can plant uh, long before anything will germinate. If you've got a dome here, you can get the, germ the correct germination te temperature to get things to germinate a bit early. And certain tough things like I've, I've sown spinach in late February and got it growing early. I mean, it grows very slowly in March and April because there isn't a lot of sun, right? But it starts growing. And then by the time we got decent sun in May, the root system's developed, the spinach is ready to grow, it explodes with growth and grows really quickly. Um, so it's another, when you're, you store your carrots in something like this all winter long, right? This soil is ready for planting much earlier than the other soil in your area because everything's frozen solid and you're waiting for things to thaw out, um, which, you know, can happen where I live, things thaw out in April. Sometimes they don't thaw out. Sometimes here the soil does not thaw out till sometime in late May, where it might look like it's thawed, but you dig down and once you've gone down two inches, it, it's all ice from there down, right? Uh, so it's another advantage of using this trick. It's, it's an easy way to get at your carrots because you know, it's just, they're just underneath it, right? Um, and you can sort of leave markers to tell where you had dug and hadn't dug so you know what part of the garden still has carrots in it. But it's also, you got a couple beds that are ready for early planting experiments and that sort of thing. So that's a great trick. Uh, if you haven't got these, just use the old cardboard box trick. You know, if, uh, let's say you haven't got a huge garden, uh, but things are starting to freeze up and you still got, I mean, one of the main reasons you leave carrots in the garden so long is because they taste better when it's like this, when everything's frozen, <laughs> right? The flavor of the carrot really improves and you're gonna get something you just can't buy in the grocery store. Right? They pick them all when it's the right time to do it with their machines. They're not waiting for the ground to have one inch of ice on it. <laughs> it just doesn't work that way, as far as I know. Um, you can do that, so you can get the best carrots. Uh, but you can get better carrots than money can buy in your garden because you can wait for everything to be really cold like this and get the sort of the most out of your carrot because the, 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 the chemistry of the carrot changes as the ground freezes. It changes so the carrot can protect itself from freezing. And it's, I mean, there's lots of different reasons for why the chemistry changes. Um, but basically it becomes more higher in sugar, which makes them taste better, right? Um, so uh, one more trick. Let's say you haven't got a, a garage that's a certain temperature. You haven't got a, uh, and I'm, I'm using my garage as sort of like a, a seasonal cold room. I don't have a cold room in my house, but by around the 1st of December, from the 1st of December to the end of March, my garage functions like a cold room. It has a high humidity and it's around five degrees Celsius, right? So it works just like a cold room. If you don't have a cold room or a garage that's the right temperature or some sort of, uh, you know, uh, what's that called? Root cellar, you know, something like that. Really old world thing. A lot of newer places don't have any, any of those sort of amenities. 
Uh, another trick, and you, let's say you don't have a very big garden, just take your carrots and take them in groups. That would be a meal, you know, like a pound of carrots or, you know, I, I always find as many carrots as I can hold between my hands. I mean, I got pretty big hands, but the amount of carrots I can hold between my two hands is the right amount uh, as a side dish for a meal. Take that many, wrap them up in brown paper bag or newspaper. I mean, some people worry about the ink in newspaper, but uh, I don't worry about that too much. But anyway, wrap it up in paper, a couple layers, let's say th three layers of paper. So put it in a brown paper bag, then wrap that in a piece of newspaper, then wrap that in another piece of newspaper, put an elastic band around that, throw it in the bottom of your fridge, okay? Uh, the carrots will keep for quite some time like that. Weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks, right? Because you're doing the same thing. You're doing that sort of humidity control uh, uh, exercise, right? By putting the paper around them, they're in a cool place with something that is soil-like, keeping the light off of them, right? So let's say you've got, you know, you know, X amount of carrots, not a lot, but you just take individual meals of them like that, wrap them up in the paper, put them in the bottom of your fridge, and take them out as you need them, right? And they'll keep for, you know, I would say at least a month like that, maybe even longer, right? Uh, so it's a great way if you've got a small garden, you don't have a lot of storage space, uh, you can put some of the carrots aside and take them as you need them like that. Uh, that's the third way. So yeah, leaving them in the ground with some means to keep the ground from freezing, putting them in cardboard boxes and sticking them somewhere so you can control the humidity, right, the moisture loss, and putting them somewhere, you know, that's reasonably cool, uh, and just wrapping them up in, you know, brown paper bag, newspaper type thing, putting them in the bottom of the fridge, right? Three really, really easy ways to store carrots. People talk about putting them in sand and putting a bit of water in the sand. That's another trick. I've never needed to do that. I think that becomes more necessary in places that are not humid. Like if you lived somewhere uh, inland that was more desert-like, that didn't have humidity. My garage, I mean, the humidity in there is always like 80 to 90%, even in the winter. <laughs> and even where I'm right now, the humidity is high. The house, our humidity is controlled in the house and it's like 60% humidity. But outside, it's today, it's like 90% humidity, <laughs> right? So it's always humid here, even in the winter. It's just a damp place, right? Um, in, in the garage in the summer, we have to have fans going to keep the, you know, mold and mildew from happening. But the, the garage is real, relatively hum, humid, so it functions like a root cellar. It has the, the humidity, right? So um, anyway, starting to ramble here, so I think it's time to wrap up the video. Uh, three easy ways to store carrots uh, so that you can... Even though your garden is sort of done being a garden for the year, you can still enjoy the food out of your garden uh, well into the winter. I hope you found that interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. Uh, check out my podcast, MaritimeGardening.com. Don't forget that uh, my sponsor, Vessi Seeds, has re-upped Vessi's Seeds. Vessi's.com is their website. They've re-upped for another year. Um, so you can buy... Basically, if you want to help support the podcast and they sell something you need, buy it from them. They sell seeds, of course, but they also sell all kinds of, you know, gardening tools and, and different accoutrements that go along with gardening. Good place to go looking for stocking stuffers. You want to get some sort of floppy hat or uh, some sort of digging tool or, or whatever, right? Um, so the details on that uh, coupon code, code GAVS22, are in the description box of this video. Just check that out. I mean, the gist of it is that as long as there's a pack of seeds in your order, you get free shipping. Uh, unless you order something enormous and heavy, that's uh, what they call an oversized item. And there's information on what an oversized item is on their website. So uh, anyway, I hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. And until next time, get out there, get at it, have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching.